So hello from Sherry Forsyth, a Life and Peak Performance Coach. Um, if I seem a little bit unprepared this morning, I am. Uh, I flew in late last night from Cape Town, uh, where I had been uh, down to celebrate a varsity reunion. Um, anyway, what we are doing today is we are going to carry on with uh, this book, um, the five things we cannot change and the happiness we, we find by embracing them by discussing the fourth um, of the five givens, and that is that pain is part of life. In other words, pain and suffering go together, and they are part of life. And so to, this morning, we're just going to touch the tip of the iceberg. Um, this is a huge, huge subject, and so I'm just going to touch uh, base uh, about a few of the things without going too much in depth. Uh, about pain. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I am busy uh, putting together a workshop on uh, on pain and so you can see you know the number of books one can read or the, the amount of time one can spend speaking about pain um, is huge. So what this given is saying is that pain is part of life. In other words, everyone suffers or everyone suffers pain of some sort or other in their lives. So I want you just to take a minute while I have a glass of water. Um, I want you to take a minute and try and think of anybody you know, I'm talking about adults now, any adult you know who has been unscathed. In other words, can you think of a single person who has not had to deal with any form of pain or suffering in their lives. Just give it some thought. Do you know a single person who hasn't um, suffered? Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing that your answer will be that you don't know anyone. Um, which, which goes to prove this given. In other words, pain is a part of living. And so if we fight it or think, um, why did it happen to me? Or why am I battling with this pain? Everyone else seems so happy. We've shown that pain is part of life. And therefore, if we can be more accepting of it, uh, we won't be fighting the battle on two fronts. We'll be able to concentrate on fighting the battle just against the pain itself. We won't also be fighting the battle to say, why me? Does that make sense? So that's the first thing. Pain is universal. Most people suffer pain of one form or another. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the kinds of pain that we're talking about as we live our lives. And I'm just going to touch on a few. I'm sure you've got lots of others. Um, but let's first say that the pain can be physical in nature. It can be emotional in nature. It can be mental. Or it could be spiritual. Okay. So you might be um, absolutely fine as far as your physical health is concerned, but you might have a huge spiritual crisis or likewise. Okay, so there's physical, emotional, mental and spiritual pain. And we don't have to have all four, thank goodness, but uh, we are likely to suffer. Um, uh, at least once in our life. Uh, as the Bible actually says, it doesn't say uh, you might suffer. It says you will suffer at some stage in your life. Okay, so so what kind of things can cause uh, financial, I mean, uh, pain? Things like uh, financial loss, um, illness, um, loss of spouses, siblings, um, parents, um, can you think 
of any others. Um, pain because you're not good enough. Pain because you're not doing your job properly. Um, uh, I would love you in the comment box below to write down maybe the kind of pain that you, you've been suffering from. You know, pain of the loss of a relationship, whether it just be a girlfriend or whether it's gone as far as uh, a divorce. Um, pain because we fail at something that we, we thought was really important for us. Pain because we lose friends uh, for whatever reason. This is endless. And our pain is very particular to us individually. So in the comment box, I would appreciate it if you could just write down what kind of pain you've suffered uh, in your life. So let's have a look and, and see what pain actually is. And in pondering this topic, I thought, let me try and put a finger on what exactly pain is. Yes, there's a physical feeling in your heart. Yes, it's painful. But what is pain actually? And I realize that the pain that we feel is linked to the situation that's causing it. So we will feel pain and then a secondary emotion dependent on the situation we have. So for example, um, if I have, for example, a physical illness, um, I might feel the physical pain of that illness, but then uh, the secondary emotions that I might feel uh, could be regret because I'm not able to do what I used to, um, uh, a feeling that I'm missing out, so in other words, a distancing between me and my family or my friends. Um, and then the last one might be a sense of maybe hopelessness because it's not getting better, okay? So pain, this is in my opinion, uh, is, uh, is very dependent on the situation that is causing it. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, uh, so, so what do we do with our pain? Uh, when we are in that situation that has created pain for us of whatever nature, what do we do with our pain? And so there are two main options that we have. And I'm going to give you examples close to home just because I've experienced them. But so the first thing we can do with pain is stick it under the carpet and pretend it's not there. Okay, we can suppress it, we can ignore it. And it's an option that is very popular with lots of people because it's supposedly the easier way. If we don't go there, if we don't acknowledge it, it means we don't have to deal with it. So then I can carry on happily, happily, life is great. Okay, however, sorry, and for the little pains, little pains in life, maybe that will work. But if you're suffering uh, one of the really big traumas, the big pains, suppression generally doesn't work. And, and research has shown that if you suppress those very powerful emotions, it will come out in some way and very often in illness. So I'm going to use my husband as an example of this. Uh, he was taught to suppress and ignore, pretend it hasn't happened, I shove it under the very lumpy carpet. And uh, so when we lost our daughter, that was massive pain. Um, and he didn't have the tools to deal with it. And I think that's quite an important uh, sentence. If you don't know how to deal with it, you can't deal with it. So then your option is just rather to ignore it. Okay. Anyway, so he suppressed it and it came out uh, initially in um, uh, lots of excess emotions, lots of volatility, lots of anger, um, lots of uh, fighting arguments. And he was a very peace loving man before that. Uh, his, his, his mind was trying to tell him that, look, there's something you've got to look at and you're not looking at it. So his behavior was very unlike him. 
And uh, after many years of that, he developed uh, quite serious illnesses, diabetes being one of them, and a condition um, similar to motor neuron, but not motor neuron, but also autoimmune, which he battles with today. So he suppressed his emotion because he didn't know what to do with it, or because people feel uncomfortable, or because people feel mm, the, the emotion that I'm going to feel is so powerful that it's going to completely overwhelm me, so therefore I can't even go there. So option number one is that people suppress their pain with uh, usually detrimental effects. Uh, option number two is that you work with and work through your pain. Uh, and as Peter Lynch says, the only way through it uh, is through it. So um, if we look at how to deal with our pain, um, we choose to use it as an opportunity to grow. We choose to learn what that pain is teaching us. We allow that pain to weather our souls, weather ourselves, and hopefully we can then harness that pain so that we become understanding of what caused it. Uh, we can maybe, because we understand and are aware of it, we can work, uh, work with it and work to change it. So very often, if you have suffered pain and you've chosen to grow through it, um, what happens is you become more empathetic, uh, much more understanding of other people who are in difficulty. Um, we get maybe a certain amount of wisdom. Uh, we learn that we've managed, we've managed to deal with this terribly painful thing. And so therefore the result is that we have emotional uh, resilience. Um, so in that case, there's quite a positive result of working with the pain. Um, whereas if we suppress the pain, um, there's usually a lot of uh, negative results. So let's have a look at some of the negative results of uh, suppressing your pain. And um, there's a saying, those that are in pain inflict pain. And I, I would like to modify that a little bit by just saying that those that are suppressing their pain and therefore are in pain, inflict pain. Okay, so very often there's, uh, with children, there's a funny behavior coming out, but actually it's because they maybe were embarrassed or hurt at school. So it's the same with adults. Okay, so those who suppress pain um, very often end up with lots of the negative behavior, including that that I mentioned uh, with my husband. But there's another really important aspect I'd like to mention. When we avoid or suppress pain, what we do is we are numbing on our emotions. Okay, we don't want to feel. So we're going to put a, a numbing over, over how we're feeling so that we don't have to go into that painful place. And uh, Brené Brown, who's the, uh, who does really wonderful work, um, uh, lots of YouTube talks, lots of books, you can follow her if you like. Um, she mentions that if you are numbing to stop yourself feeling pain, you can't numb selectively. So I can't numb myself just so I don't feel pain. If I numb myself, I don't feel pain, but I also don't feel the pleasure. Okay, you numb across the board. So what happens is you become a person that has very, very bland emotions. You can't really engage with life because you're numbing them all. So if we start unnumbing our emotions and start feeling the pain, the good news is you'll also start feeling the joy and the pleasure. Okay, so I think that's a really important thing to remember. But let's carry on down the list of how, what can happen when we do numb our pain, when we do suppress our pain. Uh, it can lead to addictions. Okay, let's just, let's just cover it all, make ourselves feel good. Let's just use escapism so we don't have to actually deal with our pain. Um, 
It can lead to passivity, which is linked with the numbing. It can lead to the hopeless, helpless scenario, or another, another word for that is depression. No matter what I do, it's not going to get any better, so I may as well just give up. Um, it, leads to vict it can lead to victimhood. Everybody must feel sorry for me because, sure, I've had such a rough time. Okay, so I'm not going to deal with the pain. I'm going to milk it, <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that everybody runs around me and and helps me and and panders to me because I'm the one in pain. So victimhood is a very big result of suppressing pain. Um, we can have lots of anger and volatility. Um, we can blame others for what's happening to us. We can be very resentful. Um, and all of those negative things actually disempower us. They force us closer and closer into victimhood. Does that make sense? Okay, and so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the positives that happen if you do deal with your pain. And very sadly, the list isn't anywhere near as long. Um, so as I'm speaking, I want you to think in the way that you have hopefully dealt positively with your pain, um, what has been the result? And I've, I'd like you to add a comment in the comment box. It's possibly things that I'm forgetting about or not thinking of. So if you deal with your pain, the, the positive effects are increased empathy uh, and compassion, meaning self-compassion. In other words, you give yourself a break plus compassion for other people. And it doesn't matter the nature of the hardship or the pain. If you have suffered a lot of pain, you will be empathetic to other people uh, irrespective of what their particular hardship is. It's just that you know that they are in pain. Uh, we have increased understanding and support of others because we know what they need, because we've been there. We also have an acceptance which is coming back to David Rico's uh, one of the five givens, that pain is a part of life. We accept that given. Okay, we accept this is what's happened. This is my time to have the pain that everybody has in some way or form in their lives, and this is my pain, so best I learn to deal with it. Okay? Um, uh, it's not unusual for people to be in pain. I think that's what I'm saying. And then lastly, we can choose to grow. And, and it is a choice we make. Let's choose to grow, hence the, the saying we have growing pains. Um, uh, let's choose to grow through the pains that, that have been put uh, in front of us. So we see it as an opportunity to grow rather than an opportunity to be absolutely decimated, as painful as our particular pain may be. Okay, so, so what, what, what do we do with pain? And this question was asked to me in one of the um, workshops I was running on, on our journey through loss. And this gentleman said to me, I, I get all of that stuff, but what do you do with the pain? And I couldn't answer him, which is why we, I'm going to do the workshop on pain, okay? What do you do with that pain? How do you work through it? Um, and so I'm going to speak from a personal perspective, but once again, I'd love it if you can add comments uh, in, the, in the comment box below um, <clears throat> about what you did when you were in a painful time and how you overcame it. So from my side, what I did was, um, some of them were good, some of them were not so good. There was certainly a certain amount of self-medication in that I, instead of having one whiskey at night, I would have two, just to take the edge off the pain, just to make myself feel a little bit more relaxed, supposedly, just to put me into, it was escapism, okay? So uh, I reckon probably for about, sure, I don't know, maybe a year after Kerry died, 
this we were certainly uh, uh, drinking a little bit more than we normally did. Not that it's a huge amount in comparison to lots of people, but for us it was a lot. Okay, so I self-medicated by having an extra drink at night. Um, I exercised, uh, and I think that really was my saving grace. Uh, so I went out running, walking. Uh, I played golf. Uh, uh, sometimes I went swimming, uh, a variety of exercises just to get those endorphins flowing. And those endorphins, as we know, will help with the chemical um, constitution of the brain when we are in pain. Uh, the third thing I did, which I don't think was a very good thing, was I think I spoke too much. So it is a good thing to find somebody that you can speak to. But to not be um, do what I did, which was actually I flooded people. So because I was so overwhelmed and in so much pain, I spoke too much to too many people. Instead of, and this is again uh, Brene Brown who mentions about flooding, we need to choose who has earned the right to hear our story and speak to them only. So we need to be discerning, okay? Who has earned the right to hear my story and then I'm gonna to speak to them. So I've learned that, uh, uh, you know, the hard way looking back, I realized I flooded people and what happens in the flooding is I don't feel good at the end of it. And the person on the receiving end also doesn't feel good because they, they feel like they've been steamrolled. So find the people who, do, who have earned the right to hear your story and speak to them. Um, my faith was a huge part in helping me deal with the pain. It helped me make sense, not all the time, but it helped me make sense when I was feeling there isn't any sense at all that I'm trying to, trying to sort out. Um, I did a lot of introspection uh, whether it was when I was just sitting quietly or when, whether I combined it with exercise, I tend to be a bit of an overthinker. But in this case, the introspection was really good because I kept on looking at what can I do with this? How must I work with this emotion? But that's just because I'm wired that way. Not everybody can do that. Uh, and then I read a vast amount. I do believe that knowledge helps us in difficult situations uh, or, or helps us if we've got knowledge we know a little bit more about how to deal with them so i uh, read voraciously on the topic of loss and grieving and that helped me immensely because suddenly one little sentence i read would come out and it would help me so that's what i did to work through the pain of the loss of our daughter what did you do with your pain or what are you doing at the moment with your pain um, that you feel might help somebody else uh, in some way? Uh, I would really appreciate comments that you have. And um, uh, in closing, I want to just mention uh, there's so much that one can talk about this, uh, this pain in our lives. Uh, and I am putting together a workshop on that. And if you would like to um, contribute to the workshop, uh, I like to base my workshops on real life uh, experiences rather than just academic knowledge. So if you would like to participate in a survey I've put together um, on pain and how you dealt with it, um, please put, pop a, a, a note in the comments box or you can drop me an email on sherryforsyth at gmail.com, spelled C-H-E-R-R-I-F-O-R-S-Y-T-H at gmail.com. And just say you would love to take part uh, in the survey. Or if you want to just tell me your story, I'm also very happy to receive that. So what happened to you? How did you deal with it? Um, it might be a lovely way of uh, you just being able to come to terms with it, uh, of being able to just release it. Um, I'm very happy for you to share your story uh, with me. 
either through my, uh, uh, on my email or you can go onto my website, uh, Sherry for, uh, sorry, www.sherryforsouthcoaching.com and you can get hold of me in that way. Uh, so I would really appreciate to hear from you and be able to put your life, real experience, um, with your permission, of course, into the workshop so that the workshop that we have, um, we really are appealing to people talking about the reality of pain. We're not just doing all the airy-fairy theory. So I thank you as always for joining me. I hope that this has been of a little bit of value to you on, uh, on how to deal with your pain. And as always, I ask you to share this with others if you found it to be of, um, of value. And we, uh, next week, we will be discussing the fifth and final of the givens of David Rico. Um, and that is um, that people don't always, uh, aren't always uh, loving and loyal to you. They can sometimes be, but they're not always, they're not always like that. They're not always consistent. So that's the topic for next Tuesday at eight o'clock. And um, in the meantime, I would love to hear from you. So have a good week until we chat next time. Bye.